Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got a ton of new stuff to go over, a lot of details that you definitely missed from the recent Pokemon Legends ZA trailer. We also have new theories, speculation, breakdowns to go over. There's a lot of stuff to take a look at today, so if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. It's trying to 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new, ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, we're going to be taking a look at this image here. So, this was posted by Joe Merrick, and it is actually taken from the Pokemon Legends ZA logo. Um, so, they are here saying the fact that the dash in the logo for Pokemon Legends ZA has got a tiny hint of blue and red is intriguing to me. I wonder what roles Xerneas and Yveltu will hold in this story. So, yeah, if you actually look at this small little dash... On the logo, we do actually see some blue up here, and then we see some red down here, and which are the colors of, obviously, Pokemon X and Y being Xerneas and Yveltal. Now, of course, those are the legendaries of the Kalos games, Generation 6, and they are most likely going to play a part in Pokemon Legends ZA. Now, if we think back to Pokemon Legends Arceus, the game was about Arceus, but Arceus didn't get a form, so I'm not necessarily thinking that Zygarde's going to get a form in this game, especially because it's already got so many different forms, like the 50% form, uh, the 25% form, the 100% form, yada, yada, yada. However, though, in Legends Arceus, Dialga and Palkia both did get forms called the Origin Forms, so it could be the same situation here where both Xerneas and Yveltal do get a, uh, a new form. And again, that's kind of just amplified by the fact that these colors are shown in the logo. And obviously, on the Japanese logos in the past, we've also had like a hint of the kind of gameplay mechanic, like on the X and Y logos, uh, or the Japanese X and Y logos, when they came out over 10 years ago, they had the Mega Evolution symbol. On the Sun and Moon logos, they had like the Z-Move crystal. Uh, on the Gen 8 logos, they had like the Dynamax uh, kind of symbol. Like they always seem to have those kind of uh, hints on the actual logo themselves and that could exactly be what is happening right here now this, this is obviously on the english logo as well uh, it could also just be the the zygarde colors as well uh, we do have uh, almika here saying i mean it could just be the zygarde 100 chest which is also a valid possibility um, but you know at the same time i it, it could be that but i think it's more or less for you know yveltal and and Xerneas. it'll be really interesting to see what kind of situation they get themselves into or what like part of the story they're going to be um in but the only difference is like we know that the game takes place in lumio city and only in lumio city so how are we going to be able to encounter any legendaries or zygarde or anything like that that's i i really really think there's going to be a massive time travel element in this game and i think we're going to be able to go to the future we're going to go to the past and I think different timelines are going to become available as well. And that's how we're going to be able to meet, like, Xerneas, Yveltal, Zygarde. The Mythicals as well, like, the Pokemon Legends kind of colouring is literally the same colouring as Magearna. Which obviously is a big Generation 6 Mythical. Legends Arceus had all the Gen 4 Mythicals in those games. Or in that game, should I say. So I don't see why Pokemon Legends EA won't have all the Gen 6 Mythicals in this game. It, especially if it's like the Industrial Revolution as well. Because like in the Magearna movie, like that, that is literally Magearna and stuff. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot of kind of like different elements that kind of give us an idea that yeah, time travel or going to different time periods is a possibility in these games. Because I just don't understand in like one city how we're going to be able to meet all of these legendaries or even how we're going to get a game out of it again it depends if there's like different biomes and stuff like that but as of right now i think that yeah xerneas and yveltal they're probably going to get new forms and i think we're going to be able to see all the mythicals as well so that's the first thing to go over uh the next thing to go over is this as well so this is what kelios tweeted out saying uh who of course is one of the many insiders of the community and they are here saying for scarlet and violet it said learn more about the new open world pokemon adventure which will be released on nintendo switch in november 2022 so when scarlet and violet was you know revealed that is what it said however though for pokemon legend za it says a new adventure set in uh lumios will be released on nintendo switch consoles in 2025 and then we have Kelios saying the game will, of course, land on the Switch 2 version. So, again, when they say, like, the family of Nintendo Switch systems or Nintendo Switch consoles, that very well could just mean, like, the OLED and the Switch Lite and stuff. But at the same time, they were available when Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was announced. Yet, when Scarlet and Violet was announced, they just said this, you know, will be released on Nintendo Switch in November 2022, even though those consoles were already out there. However, now, with Pokemon Legends ZA, they're saying something completely different. The wording is just... 
it's weird that they're using different wording here. So I, I think it is going to be for the Switch 2. I, I think that like the whole reason the Switch 2 got postponed was because they wanted to have better games or more games or just be like a better roster for when the Switch 2 dropped to get people to buy it so they could like... There's a game for everyone, basically. There's a Mario game. And I think the Pokemon game is just going to be Pokemon Legends EA. It's definitely going to be for the Nintendo Switch as well. But I think it's also going to be for the Switch 2. And if that's the case, then it will be the first Pokemon game on the Switch 2. And it just kind of... I, th I think that it's going to be a really, really just immense game. If we're going to have like better frame rates, just better graphics, stuff like that. It's going to look so much better on the Switch 2. Especially if it's in like an immersive Kalos as well. Like the Lumio City with all the different like lights and stuff. of the Lumio's Tower and stuff. Or Prism Tower. So it's... Um, yeah, it's definitely... It's definitely something to think about. Again, not confirmed that it's going to be on the Switch 2 as well. But the wording kind of helps think that. And again, if, if this does come out early 2025 or it comes out later 2025, you know, that, that would also be a good indication as well if we get the release date of this soon. Because we don't know when the Nintendo Switch 2 is coming out. We're expecting around March 2025. And if that's the case and this comes out like January 2025, then they may just like remaster it for the Switch 2 as well or like make a better version for the Switch 2. But, you know... Pokemon Legends ZA could actually come out like November 2025. You know, we, we don't know. We're expecting January because Legends Arceus came out then. But they could completely just do it in November 2025. You know, the, the whole Pokemon Presents was just a massive curveball. You know, why won't they just make a massive curveball out of the release date as well? So, yeah, it very well could be the thing where this is released for both the Switch and the Switch 2. But um, we'll have to uh, wait and see. But definitely something to think about. Uh, we also have a few other things to go over as well today. So we have Centro Leaks here saying the official Japanese account confirms that the Lumios we see on the trailer is different from the previous version in X and Y. We don't know if the game is set in the present or in the future, but we know the city seen in the trailer is not at the same point in time as X and Y. So again, it, it isn't I mean, it's very obvious that it's not in the same kind of time frame, but that is now confirmed from the Japanese accounts and stuff as well. So, again, I still think you're going to be able to go futuristic and, and in the past because, like I say, these notes look kind of like from the past. Like, this gives me Legends Arceus vibes. But then when you look at, like, these images, this looks like a futuristic location. Like, there's loads of buildings. There's, there's clearly, like, steel kind of buildings as well. Like, and you wouldn't be building things out of that, like, way, way, way back in, like, Legends Arceus times and stuff. So... That there is clearly two different time periods here. And yeah, I, I think in order to make a game big enough revolving around one city, you're going to have to do things like that. Otherwise, <laughs> there's just not going to be anything else to do. Uh, but anyway, that's that. Uh, moving on, we also have this to go over as well. It will be interesting to see how Megas work without items or abilities. Remember, this is a Legends game. So yeah, they, they very well could add them. You know, uh, just like Blaze and Cinderella says, they could add items and abilities. But yeah, in the original Legends Arceus game, we didn't have those. And usually to Mega Revolve a Pokemon, they have to hold the Mega item apart from Mega Rayquaza. Um, so yeah, maybe we do now have held items. Maybe we now do have abilities and stuff. And again, it'll be interesting what Pokemon get Mega Revolutions. I think that the Generation 6 starters are going to be the start Pokemon of this game. I think we're going to get Chespin, Fennekin, and Froakie. And I think they're all going to get Mega Revolutions. Um, I just think it makes more sense for that to be the case because none of them have a form already or anything like that so apart from obviously ash greninja but you know del fox and chestnut don't so I, I think that's more likely again it could be any starter but that's just my personal opinion especially because mega evolutions return as well it's about time the gen 6 stars got something but it will be interesting how they incorporate that into the game without abilities and without items and as well as that like going into the future will these mega revolutions be available and then will they then get abilities and stuff like it's a lot of food for thought 100 percent next up we have this post here from eduardo uh saying quasar and uh yeah this is a nice catch it really seems like the organization could be called uh quasar so this is a really good shout here as well um that this could be very well um the evil team as well like this could be the evil organization like we don't have a clue who the evil organization is going to be like it's not going to be team flair like sander's not going to be alive yet most likely uh and, and again if it's in the future like this looks like a futuristic symbol you know like this one um like like i say it, it, it's the symbol is here as well on this image it looks you know it's orange it looks a little bit outdated and then on this one it obviously looks a lot more futuristic like gives me like team plasma vibes as well this one does as well but um uh, again it'd be really really cool if we had like the evil team in the future and the evil team in the past the only thing that wouldn't make sense about that would be like team flair would be in the middle so it you know why would we have not heard about this evil team before but either way they could be like a futuristic evil team there's no reason why not uh next up we also have this post here from light 
uh, basically kind of making the comparison between this A here and the weapon, um, which again does look like it has a massive comparison between the two. Like it, it does look like that situation. And again, a lot of people are thinking that ZA could be like AZ. Obviously, it's flipped around and stuff, so we could be like AZ in the game. Hopefully, we are able to finally get AZ's flowette and stuff like that. Um, but it will be interesting if you know AZ does turn up in the story, which I think he will. Um, I think he he might be like part of the evil team or something. Like maybe our job is to try and stop the evil weapon. Uh, the 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 kind of weapon from being built or maybe we fail or something and maybe or maybe it's a different timeline yeah where we do fail and you know or or maybe we we do prevail and we stop it from being built or something like that you know it's one of those so um I, yeah it definitely looks like there's some sort of combination here between these two so it'll be interesting how that all works out uh we do also have pldh here as well just doing a little bit more of a breakdown about the trailer and stuff um saying the really exciting prospect within pokemon legends was the idea of mainline pokemon games that can experiment a lot more with the setting style and mechanics i'm really stoked to see that they've been following uh legends arceus with such a wild card reveal uh, as people debated Unova ideas, I was hoping Legends Arceus was the template for something different. A game that takes place entirely within an urban environment, Pokemon Legends Arceus mechanic were very closely, uh, closely tied to its setting and different regions provide different calls. So if Pokemon Legends Arceus is like a Safari Zone times Monster Hunter, I was hoping a Unova game would come up with gameplay focused on its defining city environment. Instead, Kalos. But these snippets suggest a game where the goals and are similarly driven by the unique attributes of the setting. So Pokemon Legends a, uh, ZA's official blurb describes the game's goal as shaping the city into a place that belongs to both people and Pokemon. And the logo connects a more industrial slash sci-fi look to uh, Z to a natural uh, 1A. Maybe the goal is to bring the Pokemon spawns into the city. Uh, the urban focus also makes sense given that Kalos was defined by its mega evolutions, which are tied to trainers. Pokemon Legends Arceus shifted the emphasis away from trainer battles to surveying slash battling wild Pokemon. It makes sense for Legends ZA to focus on trainer battles more in comparison. Because yeah, like, the whole point of mega evolution is you can mega evolve a Pokemon if you have a strong bond with them. Obviously, in the games, that doesn't matter. You can go and catch something and mega evolve it willy-nilly. But in the anime and stuff and whatnot, that is the whole point of it. So... Yeah, I think that there will be a big focus on battles. We see a battle in the trailer as well. Um, I think we see like Aegislash versus Sylveon um, in, in that kind of like battle setting. So yeah, I think there will be a lot of battles. And hey, maybe those two even get Mega Evolutions. You never know. It, it's going to be interesting to see how many Mega Evolutions we get. Like with Hisuian forms, I can't remember how, we, how many we got off the top of my head, like five or six or whatever. Uh, it would be interesting if we get more Mega Evolutions than that. Because if, if all the starters get one, that's three right there. And that's not going to be in like enough obviously but it'll be interesting how many others actually um uh get them so uh, that's all the pokemon legends za stuff all the theories breakdown things that you probably missed i do want to finish today's video off though by going over uh some more switch to kind of like stuff it's not necessarily switch to stuff but they're kind of like hinting towards it and stuff this was posted by go nintendo tweet on the 7th of february so quite a while now uh, but they're saying Nintendo's president recognizes the challenges of transitioning to new hardware, says that they'll offer unique propositions. Um, so this was posted, uh, like I say, a while ago. But they said, while Nintendo isn't ready to talk about what comes after the Switch in terms of hardware, we all know that they've been cooking something up for years now. While it seems like a reveal will be coming sometime this year, fans will need to be patient until Nintendo finally feels like pulling back the curtain. The move, the, this move from Switch to its successor will be a very important one for Nintendo, as Nintendo has somewhat struggled with the move to new hardware in the past. The jump from Wii to Wii U went terribly, and the move from the DS to the 3DS wasn't without its struggles. Will Nintendo be able to pull off a successful transition from the Nintendo Switch to its successor? Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa is certainly planning for things to go that way. In a fiscal results briefing, Nintendo's president opened up about the challenges of shifting from one piece of hardware to the next. While recognizing the challenges that Move presents as well as the constant fight for consumer free time, Furukawa says Nintendo will be offering people something unique in order to capture their attention. Um, so this is like more so about the Switch 2. It's going to be something unique. Even though I've heard that it's literally just like going to be an upgraded version of the Nintendo Switch, which is kind of all we really need anyway. Like the Switch is really good. You may as well just make a better version of it because obviously it's like pretty much the best selling console in Japan. I think it outsold the PS2. 
Uh, but this is a translation of what his statement said. So we approach our business every day with a profound sense of urgency. The generational transition of platforms in the dedicated gaming console business is never easy. We have experienced significant challenges following successful platforms multiple times. So we never consider our current situation to be totally secure. Uh, furthermore, as you pointed out, our business is always exposed to great competition. Obviously talking about like Sony and Microsoft and stuff like that. From a broader entertainment perspective, not only video games, but also various forms of leisure as competitors in the industry. In this environment, there's an increasing need more than ever before to continue offering unique propositions to become a brand that customers choose. So I don't know if the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to have some uniqueness about it. Like hopefully it has backwards compatibility. Like we already have an idea of like the specs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like being able to confirm like backwards compatibility and stuff like that would be really, really good. Again, there's also the kind of idea that there's going to be a digital uh, version and then like a... A, a, like a quote-unquote disc version as well where you have the cartridge or basically a cartridge version uh, just like the PlayStation 5 did with the disc and the discless version um, so yeah that, that could also be something they do and again if they do that then that's obviously like just giving more choice to people now the Nintendo Switch 2 will obviously have more consoles that follow it like better versions of it just like they did with the Switch with like the OLED and the Switch Lite and stuff like that um, but again I still think it's going to be incredible when it does finally drop and you know the fact that Pokemon Legends ZA could also be on it uh, also makes it very, very exciting as well because, but then it's also going to be like, if the Switch 2 is confirmed to be coming out in like March, uh, but then Legends ZA comes out in January, but then we also know it's launching on the Switch 2, are people really going to buy it on the Nintendo Switch? Are they going to wait a couple more months? I don't think they will because they would have waited for this game from now, from February 2024, all the way up to January 2025. So they would have been waiting a very, very long time I think they'd buy it. it. It'd be better if it was like the PS5 where if you buy a game, you then just get it for free on the next console like they did with the PS5 with like, I don't know I remember any games off the top of my head, like Dead by Daylight, I know did it. Um, so that's obviously like something they could do. Will they do that? I don't know. They should do that. But um, yeah, I'm very, very excited to see if this is going to be for the Switch 2. And a lot of hints are pointing towards the fact that it actually could be. So uh, yeah, very, very intriguing nonetheless. But anyway, that is going to be everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider hitting the like button down below. It's trying to 500 likes. It does really, really help out. Leave a comment with anything uh, or about anything that we covered in today's video with all your thoughts. What do you think this logo kind of blue and red is? Do you think it is about Xerneas and Yveltal or do you think it is about Zygarde's 100% form? Let me know. Do you think that the Legends, uh, the Pokemon Legends ZA game, keep trying to say Arceus, the Pokemon Legends ZA game is going to be on the Nintendo Switch 2 or do you think it's just going to be for the Switch? Uh, let me know your thoughts on like the, the Mega Evolution thing as well. Like how do you think they're going to work? Uh, the potential futuristic thing, everything like that. Uh, the secret weapon, all that good stuff. But either way, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell for daily Pokemon content. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Until next time, peace.